Nissan's announcing a new capability where somebody can remotely control, or maybe it's better put, remotely input to a self-driving car. Walk me through how this will work. In situations that the autonomous system cannot handle it at the moment, it will stop, it will communicate right to the control center, and then the vehicle manager or mobility manager will then interact. We upload new commands, and then the autonomous vehicle will drive this autonomously. So it goes self-driving car, faces an issue, pauses, gets some remote information, and then picks up the wheel again. Exactly. So is it a call center of people sitting where it is, yeah. some, somewhere in some foreign country that give the input then for the car? It could be anywhere, right. But it's not a joystick. It's not like the person no. in this call center, I'm saying, is taking over the control of the car. No, no, and that's a very important point. Joysticking is, a, is not a smart idea at a distance, right? I mean, time delays, uh, situational awareness is very difficult. So is the car a little bit like a drone that way that has a pilot on the ground? I I think of it differently. Right now, you are actually joysticking the drone. That's not what we're doing. We are not having one driver in the cloud driving one car. We're talking about one person managing, observing, supervising tens, maybe hundreds of cars. What about the liabilities? If I'm in a Nissan self-driving car and your team sends it bad instructions and I get in a car accident, who's responsible, me or you? Well, you know, that is uh, something that as a technologist, I, I know I'm not a lawyer, I don't know, but you know, I, I'm sure there will be ways to deal with that. If you don't drive, you know, if you have a driverless vehicle, you know, you're not responsible for the driving. So something else will have to uh, take place in terms of liability. So this whole service shows that cars need internet connectivity. Yeah, we'll need uh, 4G, at least 4G mobile communication. All the sensor data, LiDAR, radar, um, the video cameras, everything gets stored in the cloud. We need two-way communication to provide this service, yes. So what about the hacking vulnerability? If someone can be remotely putting information into a car so it can go a different direction on the street, if it can be connected to the internet, it can be hacked. Yeah, you know, this is, a, of course, a very difficult problem and we're working on that and thinking about it. In this case, you know, we have security in the, in the data that gets uplinked, right? It's all encrypted and we do, you know, everything we can to make this as secure as possible. So is this service a recognition that really self-driving cars, autonomous cars, can't be that autonomous, they need the help of human beings and other services. I question whether we really want fully autonomous systems that can think, act, and do exactly what they want by themselves. So we built autonomous systems with capabilities. Sure, maybe in the, in the distant future we can build systems that can completely work like humans, but at this time that's not the case. Have you been in one of these cars that has remote input yet? I've been at Ames driving in the car while it's being, uh, been doing that. And would you put your kids in one of those cars yet? Sure, you know, better than yep. my 16-year-old. <laughs>